Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, where I talk about all sorts of fun, crafty goodness that I've been up to over the past couple weeks. Today is a podcast, a knitting podcast, full of fun knitting projects. I've got two finished objects, three works in progress, some acquisitions. It's going to be a really fun one. So let's jump on in. Before we do that though, there are a few places you can find me on the internet. The main is birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily. And everything that I talk about today, all of the links to where you can find me, all that stuff is down below in the description. Two other quick announcements, which I think are exciting ones before we get started. First of all, I forgot to bring it with me, but I'll put a photo on the screen. The Resta Sweater by Lizzie Hester is now live on Ravelry. It went live this weekend, I think on Friday. So if that's something that you have been waiting for, you can grab yourself a copy now. The other exciting thing is that my shop update went live on Sunday. So the Parent Trap collection is now live in my shop. I'll also pop some pictures up on the screen of that. There's five different colorways as well as a couple different stitch stopper options in the shop as well. And yeah, that is all I have for announcements. I try not to keep them too long because I know you're here for the knitting. But let's jump into finished objects. I think we'll start with um, one that I just have photos of because I did gift it already. This is the Baby Aosta sweater. It's a pattern by the Knit Pearl Girl. I knit this out of some DK Expression Fiber Arts yarn. I have no idea what the colorway is, unfortunately. It didn't have it on the tag and I was gifted the yarn so I literally just know it's from Expression Fiber Arts. Um, I did do like a wrap test so if you wrap your yarn around this special little tool it'll tell you how many wraps per inch it is and based off of that you can figure out what weight of yarn it is. This came out to be a DK. It also had Stellina in it which is hard to see in the video that I took but really really cute. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I love the little buttons I found. They have like a little floral sort of motif thing on them. I just grabbed them from Hobby Lobby. They were super affordable and I think it turned out really well. The recipient loved it. I'm so excited to see it on their little baby girl when she's born. Pattern wise, I knit the size C. I did the six month size. I figured most people tend to get a lot of newborn gifts for babies. I figured something a little bit larger would be nice. Plus you can roll and cuff the sleeves and it'll fit a smaller baby as well if you really want it to. So I figured that was a little bit more versatile and yeah. Otherwise I knit everything to pattern and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Now, as for my other finished object, you can probably see something on me. This is my Alder sweater that I finished. Now my setup, <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm changing my setup for filming this podcast, I'm moving stuff around. I think I might be able to stand up a little bit better to show you, but I'm also going to film some b-roll again too because I just like having that as well where you can see my face in the shot and kind of see everything I'm wearing and the fit and I can show, I can just show it a little bit better. So I'll also film some b-roll of that, but I'm going to try and stand up and see if you can see the Alder sweater. This is a pattern by Rebecca Klo, by the way, before I forget. <laughs> So the issue with this new recording location is I'm in a corner <laughs> and so the chair it's harder to move because I have stuff set up all around in front of me but you can see this pretty well so I do have I'll tuck this up I don't know why that was pulled down anyways I did have a t-shirt under it I tend to wear shirts under my knit items I don't know why I guess I feel like it's going to protect it slightly more so <laughs> that's what I do but here is my older sweater I am very pleased with how this turned out. I knit the size 5 for this. Um, and I do think it came out pretty much to measurements. I literally just finished blocking it this morning and took it off the mats and put it on for the podcast because <laughs> I finished it yesterday and I desperately wanted to wear it for this next podcast episode. So I'm filming this the day of again and 
will have to edit and upload it right away after this. So I don't have any of the measurements or anything, but I feel like just fit wise, it turned out pretty close to measurements. The only thing I maybe would have done is knit the sleeves ever so slightly longer. Um, Cause they're kind of, how would you call that bracelet length? I maybe wish they were a little bit longer, but I also feel like if I was just to give this a steam and tug on them a little bit, they would block out to a little bit longer because I didn't, the only thing I pinned on this when I blocked it was the collar so that I knew it would stretch to be a little bit wider. I didn't pin the sleeves or anything. I just laid them out nicely. So I feel like if I tugged on this and pinned it, I would get a bit more length out of it. So I'm not too worried about that. Body is knit to length. I like where it hits. Not really cropped, but slightly cropped. I think it's a great length. I think the pattern had me knit from the underarm to about 10.75 inches. And then there's about an inch and a half of rip on that. So that would be about 12 inches. just just over no math yeah <laughs> math is not my forte just over 12 inches so yeah i'm happy with the length of it and i feel like it fits me really really well and i want it to get cold which it should next week which means i can start wearing sweaters so let me sit get into some other details about this um <laughs> I knit this out of Explore Knits and Fibers, Rocky's DK. I'm really happy with that choice. I feel like the stitches are really nice and defined. And I don't know, it was just, an, despite the fact that like you're, you don't really have any break rows on this, you're always doing something. Um, I feel like it knit up really well. It's so soft and squishy now. I love how it blocked out and all of this mosaic knitting really really opened up I think it's beautiful and I love that I chose to I know some people did like the darker color for their main color and the lighter for the contrast so then their cuffs and everything are in the darker color but I'm so glad I chose to switch that and do all of my cuffs and everything in the lighter color because I really wanted this color to shine. So the lighter color is Moonstone from Explore Knits and Fibers. I have been hoarding it for ages. <laughs> I needed the perfect project for it and I feel like this is it. And then the darker color, um, I purchased it from Explore Knits and Fibers Leave No Trace update, which is basically skeins that maybe didn't fully pass the quality check or they have leftovers from a different pre-order or something like that. So they're never labeled. You know the base of it, but you don't know the name or anything. But looking through their Instagram page, I feel like this is Ava Noir um, from their Solstice collection last winter. At least it's the closest looking colorway that I found. I just, I love it. I just feel like, I don't know, I just feel like it's so pretty. <laughs> so I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I'm pretty like 99% sure the pattern is releasing this Friday whatever day that is if today is what day is it today the third and it's a Tuesday so the 6th of October it should be releasing so yay coming very very soon I do want to stand up and just show you this raglan detail now that it's blocked because I just think it's so pretty. I, I'm very happy with the fit. I think it's beautiful. I'm so excited to wear it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have to say. I don't think so. Definitely check out the Alder sweater hashtag on Instagram if you have Instagram because um, you can see all the other testers projects. There are so many beautiful ones. Oh my gosh. Oh, the other thing I did want to say, um, I don't think the pattern called for it, but I did do a tubular bind off on everything. So the cuffs and the hems. And then this collar is a folded over collar. So obviously I didn't do a tubular bind off on that. And then the other trick I used is to knit my ribbing inside out. So I just do a quick German short row before I start my ribbing so that I'm knitting it inside out. And then I just find my one by one ribbing on the wrong side looks way neater. Let me fold it over. Then my one by one ribbing on the right side. 
So I just do a quick German short row so that the wrong side it shows on the right side of my knitting. So much wrong side and right side. But I just, yeah, it looks neater, cleaner, happier with how it looks. So that is my alder sweater. I, it's definitely a labor of love. Like I said, there's no breaks. There's no like, this is just a straight knitting row. You're doing something on every row. So it, the body started to feel like a slog for a little while, <laughs> but once I got to the sleeves, they flew like crazy. And then, yeah, now it's done and I'm so happy. Um, actually, I should show you. Can you even see a little bit? I feel like the decreases in the sleeves are hidden really, really well as well. Not terribly noticeable unless you're looking super closely at it. So that's great. It's just really well written. I love Rebecca's patterns and I'm so excited it's finished. Okay, let's move into works in progress. This is my Skyline Pullover Test Knit for Tori Yu. It is in a Birch Grove bag. And this is now my focus project because uh, this is the next one that is due. And I have some funky stuff going on here, which I will explain. <laughs> Actually, I'll show this right away before I get into this too much. Um, I had a genius, well, I feel like it's a genius idea. I wanted to work on the sleeves and just put the body on hold for the time being, but I didn't want to cut both skeins of yarn I was using on the body because then I'd have more ends to weave and it just was not worth it to me. So I turned it into a bag by <laughs> connecting the, as my yarn falls out of the bag because I've Exposed the hole at the bottom, uh, but I connected the sleeve hole together just with a bunch of stitch markers and I did the exact same thing on the neck hole as well so that the yarn can't fall through it and then now I just stick it in here and let it dangle as I'm working on the sleeve and the yarn doesn't get in the way, it doesn't tangle around my sleeve yarn, it just hangs out in this sweater bag that I've created. So I felt ingenious doing that. I was pretty proud of myself and it's been working really well. So yeah, um, let us go back to the beginning. Now that I've explained that, I am knitting the Skyline Pullover by Tori Yu. I'm knitting the fourth size and I've got quite a bit done. I did connect the body. I've picked up and put the collar on as well. Now I'm working on one of the sleeves. And I'm really happy with how it's turning out. So last episode, let me see how I can hold this to show you. I've got that much done on the body. Poor progress keeper is backwards. I've got that much, and that flipped again. That much done on the body since last episode as well as adding the collar and starting the sleeve. So I feel like I have accomplished quite a bit. I did a tubular bind off on the collar. I'll do the same on the sleeves. The sleeves have, which I can show a lot better now, this beautiful ribbed detail that connects from the saddle shoulder and then runs all the way down the sleeve. So I just started the sleeve last night and I feel like it's flying really quickly. It's got pretty, I wouldn't say rapid decreases, but they're pretty often. So the stitch count on the sleeve is dropping pretty quickly, which just makes it go so much faster. At least my mind feels like it's going so much faster. So I'm thankful for that. I'm really loving how it's knitting up. This is also Explore Knits and Fibers. For some reason, all of the projects I'm working on lately, I pulled from my Explore Knits and Fibers stash. And so this is Joshua Tree National Park. I guess I can show you one of the cakes. It's so pretty. Neutral but not neutral is kind of how I would describe it. So yeah, I am just knitting away on this. It's nice to have after how um, how much attention I had to pay to this alder sweater. It's nice to have something that's just basically stockinette in the round that I can just mindlessly work on. I'm really enjoying it. It's a saddle shoulder construction. So you start off with these rectangular panels 
there. Now you can see it, these rectangular panels, and then you pick up stitches on the edges of them to make the rest of the body, and then just keep going. I guess I should also mention, because um, I don't think I've shown this on the podcast often, and people are always asking, what is this dangly thing here? <laughs> This is how I count rows on my knitting. So every time I come to it, that is the beginning of the round, and I'll just move it down to the next number. And so, for example, on this pattern, I'm decreasing every seventh round. So I keep moving it down on the first round right now. Once I get to the number seven, then I will do a decrease and then start it all over again but it has totally changed my sleeve knitting game. I'm not like awkwardly clicking on a row counter or trying to remember it in my head. And every time I set it down and then pick it back up, I know exactly where I am on it. So it is linked down below. I am an affiliate. Um, I wanna make that clear. So I do make the tiniest little commission if you purchase anything from Twice Sheared Sheep, but I really do appreciate it. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. I just get a little bit of commission off of your purchase. So yeah, that is the row counters. I love them. And otherwise, size four explore knits. I think that's about it. This is, y'all are gonna laugh at me. This is due next week. <laughs> but if you watched last Q and A episode, people always ask how I get knitting done so fast. The question was answered in that episode, but I don't work. So I'm not worried about it. I know I can get that finished in time. Plus I just literally carry my knitting everywhere. If you see me, I have knitting. It's in my car. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I take it when I'm cooking dinner. I take it to every single friend's house. All my friends know that I bring knitting and I can totally be engaged and know what's going on in the conversation or we're playing a board game and I can still pay attention. I'm just gonna be knitting, so. Not worried about finishing it at all. Um, but that is where I am with the Skyline pullover. I am also working on my sibling sweater my size. This is a pattern for, or I'm testing for, Laura Penrose. And I've got a little bit done on it. I'm now done the increases on the back of the body and I'm just knitting it flat. So. This is the size six. I'm knitting it out of Explore Knits and Fibers yarn. The pinky tone is Nutcracker, and this other one is called Daybreak. So yeah, I've got maybe a good inch done on this since last time. Not tons, but we're getting there. Once the knitting flat on the back of the body is finished, I find the rest of it goes really fast because like there's a curve to the neckline so you're knitting like little smaller sections in the front flat first and then you connect it and you don't have nearly as much to knit flat in the front and then suddenly you're knitting in the round and I can fly through knitting in the round so I'm not too worried at all. I just have to show you these beautiful increases though. They just create the neatest, so it sits like this on the back my shoulders. The neatest line with the stripes. I just think it's so pretty. So I'm using this yarn like as more of a sport weight this time around. I would say Explore Knits and Fibers, their DK base is on the lighter side of DK. I would say it's more of a sport. There is 274 Pretty sure it's 274 yards, yes, per 100 grams. So my DK base that I have in the shop is 231 yards per 100 grams. So it's definitely lighter. For that reason, I feel like I can use it interchangeably as a DK or a sport. So usually for a DK weight sweater that has a 20 stitch gauge, I will knit it on a three millimeter needle. Do not do that yourself because you probably knit tighter than me and it's so loose. Uh, that's beside the point though. So this I'm knitting on a 2.75 millimeter needle because the gauge is it's either 21 or 22 stitches per inch. I love these colors together. I feel like they're super unique. I haven't seen anything like this before. So 
very happy with how it's going and yeah this progress keeper is from hello lavender there's a whole bunch of them on there because i have the accent markers just attached to it so i don't lose them it's been a fun knit stripes are great because i get excited about moving on to the next color so i feel like i knit faster <laughs> i don't know what it is about that but that is my sibling sweater my size also have the teensy tiniest cast on of my cardi jumper marinara version i think it's marinara Mar Marin it's french i'm not french it's just a um included version with some stripes in it of the cardi jumper pattern that i'm testing for bare knit um she has this pattern out already but she is rewriting it so that it's a little bit more size inclusive and a little bit um, easier to read so i am testing it i am knitting this out of wolverine fiber co berry tweed this is the colorway morning hike it was a um club colorway but now for some reason in the back of my mind and i can't look it up right now because i'm filming on my phone but i'm pretty sure this is going to be a part of the forest floor collection that's coming out this weekend don't quote me on it but i feel like i saw it so if you like it you might be able to grab it this weekend but <laughs> you're not even going to be able to see what is going on with this it's so tiny and ridiculous and my camera's not even going to focus on it oh uh, how do i i don't even know how to cover my face there that works so it's just the teensiest little start i cast it on yesterday it is a cardigan the whole thing's gonna be knit flat i'm loving how it looks so far though it's got really beautiful neat um seams on it i love a seam and eventually i will start putting stripes into it i haven't decided what color i'm gonna do yet for the stripes originally my mind was just telling me to do like a straight up undyed cream but i don't know the only issue i'm worried about with that is this tweed base is quite thin there's like 200 or not 200 400 and 98 yards per 100 grams and if i was to use my undyed base it is 400 yards per 100 grams so that's quite a thickness difference and i feel like that could cause me some issues so um i might dig through my stash and see what i have for leftover tweed yarn kicking around or even just a 75 25 base because those tend to be even just that little bit thinner they're usually about 430 some yards per 100 grams so i feel like that wouldn't have as stark of a difference as using my 80 20 base so yeah i haven't decided what i'm going to do for stripes yet but there will be stripes on this yeah <laughs> that's that's about where i am this is not as much in my radar because it's not due as soon as some other test knits but i'm very excited to be using this color i think it's going to make a really versatile cardigan so yeah really pleased with that and then i'm sure you saw behind me i'm trying to figure out colorways for something um these are all in the shop already. I'm just trying to figure out what I want to use for a project in the future. So those are laying there for that. There's no other reason, but this came in the mail. This is Cable Knit Style by Joanne Ho. And I forgot I had pre-ordered this, to be honest. I pre-ordered this, I think in the spring, and it showed up in the mail last week. And I'm really excited about it. It is a beautiful book full of cabled patterns there it's got sections to it let me find the um, index so there are four different sections in it garments for layering and coordinating quick knits that impress simple and clean subtle and uncomplicated cables and then lightweight airy garments but let me find you i know there's pictures in here yeah i want to make that is that not beautiful it's knit i think with let me find it in here 
with like a worsted weight yarn, I believe. Here we go. Bulky. 100, yeah. Okay, so that would knit up really fast. Uh, 137 yards per 100 grams. So I bet you I could even get away with holding worsted double to make that work and it would knit up very fast. But that that's in there, that I think is gorgeous. Uh, yeah, this won't give anything away. This one's beautiful as well. I've seen that a lot where like the cables stop kind of shortly after the bust. I think it's really flattering. Or there's this one. That is, I feel like that one's Surrey held double. Yep. It's a, well, this one used a mohair, but you could use Surrey as well. Um, some sort of lace weight held double. Anyways, love this book. It's only, I think like 25 bucks. I might have got a slight discount on it because of, this one's pretty too. Sorry, my lights are kind of reflecting on it. Um, I might have got a slight discount on it because I pre-ordered it, but I feel like even for $25, there are a lot of patterns in here that are something I would love to knit. Like, look at this. Half zip. Yeah, it's a beautiful pattern book. I feel like it's a great coffee table book too. I'm excited about it. And I was excited that it was kind of a surprise because I forgot I ordered it. So... <laughs> I grabbed that otherwise I haven't purchased anything else lately so that is the only acquisition I have yeah I think that is everything I have to talk about today a little bit quicker of an episode but hopefully full of some stuff that you enjoyed next week's video is up in the air if you have any ideas for videos if there's something you'd love to hear me talk about please leave it down below in the comments I would love that um, sometimes it's hard to come up with inspiration for a video every week I love doing it I have zero complaints but every once in a while my brain is lacking with ideas so if there's something you want to hear about let me know down below in the comments if you haven't subscribed already please do so it helps the channel out so much you can hit that like and notification button as well notifications help you know when i upload and likes help other people know when i have uploaded it shares my video out to the youtube community a little bit more thank you so much for joining me this week on this podcast episode i'll see you next week Bye.